Bienvenidos, Husham Deed, and welcome to another Netacad Introduction to Python course supplemental video tutorial. In this video tutorial, we're going to be taking a look at lab 3.1.2.11. And this is going to look almost exactly like the previous lab, which was 3.1.2.10, where we used the continue statement and we called it the ugly vowel eater. Now, in 3.1.2.11, this is going to be the pretty vowel eater. And so what is the major difference? Well, let's come over here and let's take a look. You can see we've got some test data here that we're going to be using. But by and large, the lab is almost identical. Here are a few of the changes. At the top on the right-hand side of this screen here, you can see word without vowels. And we've created this empty string. So we've created a variable, yet it has no letters that would make up any kind of a word. So we're going to prompt the user to enter the word, and we're going to assign that to the user word variable. We're going to continue to use the string method upper to convert it to uppercase, and then we're going to iterate through the string letter by letter, and we're going to do the same thing that we were doing before, which is we're going to try to identify the letters uh, that are vowels, right? And when we match a vowel, we're simply going to skip it or continue. Now, here's the difference. We're going to assign the uneaten letters. Those would be your consonants to the word without vowels variable. And that's why it was defined here at the very, very top of the screen. Now, they've created that for us, but how are we to get each of these letters, one after the other, the consonants, how are we to get those into this word without vowels variable so that each and every one of those consonants gets in there, well, we're going to be using concatenation, right? So we're going to use the concatenation operation. So as a quick review, we'll come over here to the Integrated Development Learning Environment, or IDLE. And here's the file that I've got created over on the right. And this was for lab 31210. And the reason that I have this here is because all of that code right there is going to be code that we will continue to use. No pun intended because we've got the continue statement in here, but all of that code we're going to be able to reuse in some form or fashion. Now you'll notice the else statement is where I've stopped the copy because we're not going to use uh, that else statement. In fact, I'll go ahead and grab it since it'll just be a minor change down here when we're talking about uh, what we're going to be doing with this this print letter. We're not going to be doing that anymore. So I'm going to copy this. In fact, if I was to run this, let's see the ugly vowel. And I'll put in here Gregory, which was something we used. And you can see I added in the two print statements here at the top. One to show what the user had added in, which was Gregory with a capital G. And then after the string method upper had been used. Now, we get all of the consonants each on their own individual line. And then we get this, we are outside of the loop, which I put in there just to show you that we are now outside of that for loop. And so the change on this activity for 32111, the pretty vowel, um, and I'm trying to remember what we're calling it here, the pretty vowel eater, uh, is that all of the letters are going to be added to that variable, and then we're going to print the word assigned to word without vowels. So what's that going to look like? Well, I know I'm going to need to test for all of these things here. Again, the else statement is going to change. Let's go ahead and slide 31210 uh, out of the way. And so here you can see we've got four letter in user word. Well, let's go ahead and let's pull this back here. And in fact, I've grabbed the entire for loop already. So if I was to drop that in right there, you can see four letter in user word. And again, we're checking all of these things. Now, the else statement is going to change. And we're going to address that here in just a second. So let's come back to the word without vowels. 
right? That variable's been instantiated, and it basically is uh, no characters, right? So it's just the null string here. Uh, so we're going to prompt the user to enter a word and assign it to the user word variable. Well, all of that code is also the same as the code from the previous activity. So let's do some code reuse here. And I'm actually going to leave the uh, two print statements in here that we had added previously so that we can see what the user enters in as opposed to what it looks like after we have converted it using the string method upper to all uppercase characters that we then go through and try to match any of the vowels. So here's where we're going to come to this word without vowels variable. And it's gonna be right here in the else statement. So let's talk about the logic here. So four letter in user word, I'm gonna go through, and if it's a capital A, E, I, O, and U, if, it is, if it's a vowel, I'm just gonna continue and go right back up to the next letter. Now, what do I wanna do for all of those letters? In other words, else, my catch-all, if it's not a vowel, what am I going to do with it? Well, we're using concatenation here, and let me see, I'm not sure that that actually, let's make sure, there we go. Uh, what we're going to do is we're actually going to uh, capture each of those consonants, uh, and we're going to concatenate those consonants to the word without vowels string. And so what we would do is simply this right here. And that is the concatenation character right there. And so what we're doing is we're basically saying else word without vowels, which the first time through the loop is the null string here. It's nothing, right? We don't have anything there, no characters. We're simply going to assign it to word without vowels and concatenate the letter. So it would be empty and then we concatenate the letter right so the first time through if i was to use gregory as the example the g would be concatenated to the empty string and so we would then have just the g capital g and then the next time through it would be the r and so then at that point word without vowels which is a string just simply the uppercase g is then going to be the uppercase g plus the next letter the next consonant which is going to be an uppercase R. And then it says, just simply print the word assigned to word without vowels. And this is very straightforward, right? We've been doing this for quite some time. So I would simply say print word without vowels. And that is one way to solve this problem. So let's go ahead and hit F5. We'll say OK. And then we'll say Gregory. Uh, and you can see, we print out what the user entered in. We print out what it looks like after the string method has converted it to all uppercase characters. And then we see what it looks like with the E and the O removed. Let's run it again. And interestingly enough, I actually, uh, that word abstemious, I had to look that up. Uh, it's a non, it means non, it's an adjective, non-self-indulgent, especially when eating and drinking. So with alcohol, you definitely want to be abstemious. All right, well, let's take a step back here uh, to print word without vowels, and let's rerun this, and we will use abstemious as the word, and there we go. The A, the E, the I, the O, the U have all been removed, and we get B-S-T-M-S as our string and again as the code ran through for all consonants they were simply concatenated using that plus character right the letter was the variable that we used as we enter into for each letter in the user word that letter is checked and if it's a consonant we concatenate it to word without vowels now is there another way we might approach this? And the answer is yes. Now they've asked us to do concatenation, but let me ask you, and let's pull this back. If I was to tell you that you couldn't use concatenation, right? And again, this would also eliminate the use of the word without vowels variable. So if I said you can't use concatenation to get this done, 
how could you get it so that it prints it all out on one line right there, each of the vowels? Well, remember, we can use a keyword argument with the print command. And I can change the end of line character, right? That E-O-L end of line character, which is a new line, a carriage return. And so what I could say is print letter comma end equal, and then we just do that. So now let's run it and see what happens here because we may want to add one more print statement. So we'll use abstemious again, and there we go. So there's nothing else that we would need to add in. So again, just showing you an alternative approach where you don't use word without vowels. I understand why they wanted you to use that because they're having you exercise sort of that concatenation muscle that you've been working on and going through some other logic and then printing out the variable name. But using something we've previously learned, you could also accomplish the same thing. And we could have even done this in 31210 uh, had we wanted to have it all print out on one line. Very nice and pretty. All right, well, that is going to do it for this lab activity, lab 3.1.2.11. We took a look at the continue statement and we created the pretty vowel eater and we saw two different ways that we could make that happen. One that's going to fulfill the requirements that the lab is requesting and the other, which is simply a way of us thinking outside the box and maybe how we can eliminate some code that wouldn't be needed. All right, best of luck to you out there in your studies. Thank you so much for watching, and I hope to see you in the next video.